We've got some hey, fresh new I'm Luis. Talent and I'm Luis. You and you're listening before. to the Content One, is Profit two, Podcast. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, what's up? What Happy Monday. Up? <laughs> Happy lunes. Happy lunes. We got uh, DJ sessions over here with Fonzie. Yeah, I just... <laughs> we can just pretend to DJ. And I just learned uh, today's DJ <laughs> is actually one of the speakers from Funnel Hacking Live. So yes, interesting. I just found a post and I thought it was interesting. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna name who he is. If you want to know, just let us know. But over nine nine hundred nine 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 hundred nine hundred streams, and it's like his passion project. Wait, nine hundred streams of him DJing. DJing. Yes. Wow, that is really cool. That is pretty awesome. So yeah, should we do some soccer streams? Uh, well, FIFA streams. We gotta get into uh, <laughs> into gaming streaming. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't want people to see my rage. It, it's okay. That's part of what makes a good, you know, streamer. I know, I know, I know. The, all uh, the other crazy want, things. If you want to see us playing FIFA and how I beat Fonzie every single time, just like let us know in the comments, and uh, that we'll never happens. We'll do it for you. But You'll I, be disappointed because <laughs> uh, he won't be delivering on that promise because I usually <laughs> whoop that booty. <laughs> he does. He's really good. But anyways, if you're into video games, let us know. We'd love to connect. Obviously. That's one of our, you know, side passions. When, you know, the kids go to bed, I play for like 30 minutes before falling asleep. Yeah, but my, anyways. Pa my passion is real <laughs> soccer. Just that when I cannot play outside, then yeah. I beat my brother and I feel good about yeah, it. Yeah, we did play this. <laughs> we, we did play Sunday, Sunday league over 30, baby. We lost, but I scored a goal with the assist of Fossey. Just don't saying. E don't even bring it up. I am still <laughs> upset about it. I'm probably going to be upset until next Sunday. Um, I'm ready to go compete again yes. and kick some booty. Let's go. Let's just start this podcast. Let's just start this episode. Before I get, yeah. <laughs> I get mad talking about that soccer game. All right. Here we go. We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And this is Luis. And welcome to the Content is Profit before. podcast. In here, you're going to get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase revenue. <laughs> you hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, <laughs> and anything and everything you need to know about content. All this while having a good time. The goal of this podcast is simple. Entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, you almost blew go. my ears with that drop so loud today. I had to scream. Well, you have Did a you headache. I don't know. Drink water. Are you drinking water? I <laughs> know. The other day I saw a social media post where it was like somebody saying like every time that I'm, you know, I'm like, I feel like anxious. I feel bad or bubble, like just negative stuff. Just drink water. And they say, and they tell that to like their significant other or their partners, whatever. And they go on like, have you drink water yet? <laughs> it's like, no, I haven't drink any water. But it was like yesterday, it's like leaving, leaving the beach with the, uh, I just cramped on my pinky toe <laughs> after the soccer yeah. game and all the running was... with the kids. And Katie was sitting next to me. And she's like, water. <laughs> yeah, it was an intense day. But without further ado, what are we talking about today? You want to share with me with the with the audience? Or you just drinking Absolutely. water so you don't cramp in the middle of the show? Absolutely, both of them. But anyways, today we are going to be talking about what is Google's new algorithm update telling us about AI-generated content. Ooh. Is this a stab at me liking AI? No, it's not a stab at anybody. I just think it's something that is important for people to consider. You know, if you have a stance, share with us what is your stance with AI-generated gener uh, AI content. You know, we have an episode. If you want to go check it out, it's called What's Your Take? We talk all about it. Ooh, baby. But I think this is uh, a good discussion, you know. And actually, right now, we were looking at some cartoons that I thought they were pretty funny, right? Not cartoon, comics. Comics, exactly. Sorry, not cartoons. Comics. Comics from, uh, it's called marketunist.com. That's a website. And, you know, all... I know it's said in there that you can license the cartoons and everything, so I'm just giving them a shout out right now. But one of the cartoons, it was pretty funny. I was like, hey, I use this AI. I, I put a bullet point and it created a long form email for me. <laughs> and then on the other side, the receiving end, the person was like, look, I received this long email and AI just put it on a single bullet point, which was pretty funny. I was it's like, hilarious. I think yeah. like it does summarize. That's like every content team right now. <laughs> it does summarize in a sense how people are using AI yeah, and yeah. also the short attention spam economy that we're living on today. But that being said, you know, a lot of people have started 
pumping out content with, you know, AI. And also there's a story, there's a history of, you know, black hat type of tricks that marketers use specifically to try to rank higher in Google, you know, to kind of like trick these mediums into, you know, placing higher to be in front of the customers and leverage all this momentum to obviously profit for themselves. And then historically Google comes and boom, throws it an update. All these people that were doing the black hat Slide practices. Slide tackle to the knee. Yeah, they just crash, <laughs> right? And then they're struggling or trying to find new tricks to come back on top. So with AI generated content, there's been also, you know, a lot of, let's say, concerns about it because it is human-like generated content. It re When you read it, it really feels like a human wrote it. And, you know, Google potentially is doing some things here and there to benefit not just the businesses that have honest practices, but also the reader at the end of the day, right? They want to protect the user because it's easier than ever to just pump up content. Yeah, uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we're not going to lie. Obviously, we've been looking at different ways on how can we integrate this amazing tool, right, into not only the process, but how can we speed it up? How can we use it? Uh, to boost like that human result that we're doing on the back end. So there, there's many things that we're that we've been trying. I'm a big fan personally, but also I want to put out there that we're big fans of frameworks and principles, right? And uh, if we are basing our strategies and our our, our action items in frameworks and um, and uh, the, what did I just say? The frameworks and <laughs> so you okay and there? principles. <laughs> I need water. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, uh, wait, wait. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Frameworks and principles, then you are going to be able to leverage these tools. You you never pay attention when I talk. You missed the joke. I'm, d I'm, d I'm paying attention, <laughs> but you heard the frameworks and principles like 20 <laughs> times in a row. You get it? Frameworks and principles. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, not the hacks. All right. So this is where I want to frame the conversation of today, right? And this came from the search quality evaluator guidelines by Google right, in an update that they did for their SEO mainly. Now, of course, Google owns YouTube, which again, is gonna push and pushes a lot of content. And I wouldn't be surprised if other platforms start taking this into consideration as well when judging content to see whether they push it in front of people or not. So, are we ready to start or you have another, something else that you wanna add? No, I'm good. All right, cool. Go. So, part of the, kind of like guidelines that Google had in place for, you know, determining page quality for SEO. And I'm just going to put out there, honestly, we're not SEO experts, but when reading this, I was like, this makes total sense. And I think it's actually going to be pushed into other sorts of content 100%. And personally, I think this is a very personal opinion. You might have a different, I think this is the gold right here that actually people are looking for as well in the content that they consume. So before there was this thing called EAT, right? So E-A-T, which stands for expertise, authority, and trust. Trust being the most important, I don't know what I did. I touched something there. <laughs> trust being the most important part of the whole equation, right? Which trust is considered the extent to which the page is accurate, honest, safe, and reliable. And obviously, depending on which is the website, you know, the type of website, there's different, I guess, things that they would consider for trust. So for example, in online stores, secure online payment, right? For product review, are they honest and written actually by actual users, you know, no bots, etc. So that is one of the most important judgments. But the other one was expertise and authority. So expertise is consider the extent to which the content creator has the necessary knowledge or skill for the topic. Again, you need to be an expert when sharing about it because they're not going to push content to the top from somebody that knows nothing about a very specific topic. And then the other one was authority. Consider the extent to which the content creator or the website is known as a go-to source for the topic. I think the way Google uh, historically has determined this is through backlinks, right? If there's a lot of backlinks uh, of high quality backlinks that are kind of like pointing you towards that page, that means that is a page that has authority, right? So we have those three elements, expertise, authority, and trust. And if you look at it now, let's put it, let's look at it under the lens of AI generated content. 
you can actually have all those three and don't know necessarily if AI was what wrote the content because AI has a lot of knowledge, right? Because it has a huge database, database yeah. of knowledge, right? That they can pull from. So they can sound like an expert, right? Do they have authority? Well, if they create a lot of good quality content, expert-based content, a lot of pages can, you know, link to those, have backlinks and all this stuff, raising its authority, therefore also creating trust. Again, creating trust as some other factors in there. But I totally think AI-generated content can go through all these three elements with no problem. Yeah, I mean, um, last week we, just, we had an internal meeting with our project manager, right? And we were looking through different prompt ideas on how we can support the people that we help on the caption writing, for example, is a big pain point, right? And we're mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, how can we craft a prompt that can guide us in the process of making this more human, more relatable to the market that this specific person is talking to, right? Yep. And uh, after several several options and several things that we ended up putting in, we were using ChatGPT uh, for specifically for that one. Uh, we were able to come up to something that's really, really close to something that that specific client was saying in her podcast, right? So yeah. clearly it can get you very, very close and it depends on the instructions on how you train the tool that you're using. But again, like uh, we say every single time, right? We got to test, we got to put it out there and see. And uh, the problem is a lot of people don't have the patience to actually go through this process of doing the, doing them themselves first, right? Putting yeah. it out there, see what happens, what's the feedback, and then doing it with a tool like AI today, putting out there and see how it works and how it's feedback. I mean, just right now, we had a conversation also with a different person about scheduling, right? Like how do we distribute this content? There's some tools out there that are really, really positive, right? That leverage, um, you know, you can call them schedulers, but there's some that leverage a lot of AI technology to create a flow for you, for example, yeah. from like one to 30 posts, you can do this in like about an hour. So it can be really fast, but actually what's happening on the back end with the platforms, are, are the platforms recognizing that this is AI distributed content versus a human being behind their phones because this platform want people inside of their platforms using them, right? Is there a difference, right? So the conversation with them was like, okay, let's, let's test it out, right? If you wanna save time on the distribution, right? And that's a priority for you, Perfect. Let's try that for one or two weeks and see what happens, right? If that's not your priority, then let's do the other way, right? But whatever you choose first, let's make sure that we can also conduct an experiment backwards and see what happens, right? And I think a lot of people are just looking for that quick hack, right? Yeah. To do the it. The black hat tricks, the, right? The black hat tricks, right? And they don't have the patience to actually run these experiments. Either they don't have the patience, they don't have the time, or they don't have the resources to actually go do that. So I encourage if you're listening right now to this, I'm like, mm, this is very important because, you know, the search engine, which is where people find me, right? With different topics, if I'm writing, if, if you're building that authority figure, right? Or the platforms that provide that exposure, if you are not paying, right? If you're not paying for ads, for example, that speed up the process, then I want you to be very honest with you and be like, okay, can we book in the next two weeks? This is our distribution strategy. This is our creation strategy. Can we create a, you know, uh, a, a test, B test, and then test it out and see what the results and are. A B test. Yes. <laughs> and A B test. Um, yeah, that that good points. Good points. You're you're pretty smart. <laughs> What's happening so, with you today, dude? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> um, so you know, you might be listening to this and you're like, well, but I'm not writing blogs, right? I'm not on SEO. And honestly, we don't have a blog at the moment. Right. But I see this and I'm like, there's so much value in this into the type of content that we're currently creating as well. Cause guess what? There's a lot of people that script their podcasts and they script their podcasts now using AI, but we don't script our podcasts. You can tell definitely we don't, <laughs> but at the same time, the element that now Google has included into that eat algorithm, right? I think it's going to be a distinguisher for any type of content that you're creating, regardless it is for SEO or whether that is for your podcast or just honestly your social media content. So before I dive into what is that addition from Google, I want to share another cartoon from market, market, market tunist, right? Another comic It's not a cartoon. I, <laughs> I think I say cartoon because it says market tunist, you know, cartoonist, <laughs> whatever. It's a comic. So the comic says. There's two people sitting kind of like at this table 
and one is telling the other person. Consumers want communication that is human, empathetic, and real. So hopefully, or AI <laughs> can learn to generate content like that for them, right? And you see that and you're like, wow, that is crazy because it is 100% true what people are trying to say, right? They're trying to get this AI to write these like empathetic, like superhuman like pieces of content yeah, again yeah. to resonate with the person on the other side. I got I got two points before we uncover like this new element, right? That yeah. Google released, right? It's like I've been obviously we are in this world of of not just consuming the content but learning and and sharing this knowledge with you, right? But uh, it's been hilarious because obviously with the rise of ChatGPT and then Bard and then all these things, you know, all these tools, right? Uh, we've been diving deep and it's hilarious because now you can see the either the coaches or you know the the past crypto bros and now they're all ai experts and all these cheat sheets right of like what prompts should i use and all this stuff hashtag grind set <laughs> hashtag grind set and uh you know we we go in there and obviously and we read and maybe here's you know some information that that can be helpful but this specific comic that Fonzie just shared is that specific thing. It's like, hey, here are all the prompts to make this person or X or me, like, l you know, feel and be empathetic and all that. Well, wh why don't you actually try to be human? Why don't you actually try to be empathetic? Yeah. Like, and, and this is why, you know, personally, as a creator or somebody that is in front of a camera, right? We think that video is the best way to do this because that's you, that's the real you. And if it's live, even better, right? And, yeah. and I think most people are very fearful of that process of actually looking inside of you and be like, do I actually have what it takes to be in front of a camera and deliver something that can be relatable? And yes, we understand that sometimes it can I be scary. I think everybody has what it takes. Of it, course it, takes it does. Practice. It takes practice. It takes time and repetition and doing the reps like everything else, right? But now there's like this tool that is really, really easy to use, right? That yeah. can p potentially be very close to that. and. That's why I think a lot of people are hiding behind it's it. This is marketing for the lazy, for people that don't want to put in the work. And again, we sound like we're hating on AI right now. We don't. My brother actually loves it a little I bit more than it. I do. I a little do. bit more, way more <laughs> than I do. But still, we do see the value in it. And I think it's a great tool for kickstarting the creation process, right? Now, what is that new element that Google added Tell to me. the eat frame that eat kind of like framework that they have, right? And it is still called eat. They just <laughs> added a new E at the beginning. So I want you to envision a, a Venn diagram, right? For those that don't know, a Venn diagram, imagine those like two circles overlapping, right? And the overlap side of it is trust, is the most important part for these page qualities that Google has, right? Like they want mm -hmm. trust between the creator, right, or the site and the reader, right? Then the two big circles are expertise and authority, those we already talked about, right? Now there's a third circle that's coming in now, which is the next E that Google is adding, and that is expertise, right? I, I'm, I'm sorry, oh, I just revealed it before. <laughs> <laughs> it's, ex it's, a, it's experience. I, I oh, I messed up. It's experience, right? No, you said you said. Did I say expertise before? before? Yeah. Oh man, I messed I messed up the reveal. I needed some drums. I needed some drums. Clearly, clearly, uh, this is not strip the guys. The, yeah, clearly, <laughs> the, the reveal was about to be so like powerful, and then all of a sudden became so anticlimactic. But it's okay. The new e, the new e that Google added is. Exper experience, right? Which is considered the extent to which the content creator has the necessary firsthand or life experience for the topic, right? And I think this is going to be key because now they're going to start evaluating, right? This personal experience. So for example, if we produce a piece of content on what are the best or ways to create a, a podcast, right? Guess what? we can include inside of the article or personal experience about growing content is profit, some of the pain, some of the challenges that we experience. And Google now is going to see that and they're going to be like, oh, this is unique, right? That is unique yeah. to them. We're going to help them rank. <laughs> Coffee is E is the original. That is true. <laughs> that is true. I'm guessing that is Tim right there. What's up, Tim? <laughs> so that new E for experience, it is key. And I relate back to that comic that we read consumers want communication that is human empathetic and real so hopefully or i can learn to generate content like that for them well guess what ai 
probably cannot replicate or or talk about your personal experience because they don't have that information. So how can you infuse that into your content, right? And we've often talked about storytelling, right? Actually go and listen to the previous episode that we did. Some of the, our favorite rules from Pixar about storytelling, great, great episode, right? But you include those inside of your content and you're gonna differentiate, differentiate yourself from a whole lot of people, right? Absolutely. And through those stories, through that experience, you're gonna start connecting even more with your audience and the people yeah. that you wanna help and hopefully move them through that customer journey. Now, I wanna be very clear. This doesn't mean that you won't be able to use AI, right? There's obviously many, many tools yeah. to do this, right? And we go back to the six phases or now the six pillars that we're like looking, that are our, our goggles, right? That we're looking every piece of content through, right? So you got the research type of deal. Obviously there's AI tools that can help you do the research or even- This, is, a right, different this ideas. is my fear with the research and AI that, what if AI shares something wrong and then people wait, wait. not doesn't do their due diligence or don't have like multiple things to compare it and they just ultimately take AI's word as the ultimate truth. We we can do a whole episode on, on that uh, on just AI for each of the faces and the yeah. fears and what are you worry about. But let, can I I, yeah, I, I just, wanted, I just wanted to share that, you know, just kinda okay. like <laughs> put a little seed of thought out there into the universe. Absolutely. Right. Proceed. Okay, proceed. But obviously, it's trying to find a way on how you can leverage the tool for whatever resource maybe that you're lacking. So if the resource is time, what's a tool that can make your process faster? So for example, for our podcast production, this tool has been a game changer for us and our team. This script, right, for us has been great because guess what? It facilitates how do you consume the content? How do you consume the episode? What are the clips that we're selecting? We can communicate multiple teams in there, right? The, it cleans the audio. It removes like white spaces in what we do in the short form. Like there's so many things that you can do, not only on like the what do we say thing, Obviously, the what do we say? We conduct our research. We just consume a lot of content. We're like, we're in the mix, right? As that's part of being the expert, like in what we talk about, right? Which if you're listening, I am 100% sure that you're an expert in something. And on top of that, you can lay your stories of your day to day and things that are happening every single day, like us, like for example, like, oh my gosh, I just listened to the Beastars and uh, the Fonzie tried to land a joke and it didn't land or, you know, a review and it didn't land. Anyways, that's never, exactly never what happened. happened. Never happened. Uh, and then you can <laughs> layer those up inside of your structure and then use whatever tool that you want to use AI to ex to expand on it, right? So for example, here's a very practical uh, thing that, for example, that I did or that we did, right? We recorded an episode about bypassing legacy media, right? And then we talked about it, we gave our opinions, it was laid out in a way that it was like six different things that we talked about. Then we used this script to be able to grab the transcript and delegate it to our team in, in a sense. And then I just grabbed that transcript, we summarized it with AI, right? Just because I'm leveraging time at that moment, right? And then I put that summary into ChatGPT and prompted be like, hey, can we write a blog post about this, right? And it spit out something. And that something, it then went back to me where I layered my voice and the stories that we told. So it was like a back and forth. It was kind of having another teammate that was really, really fast at delivering the thing that I was asking or asking feedback for. But the key point here is that content passed through human hands and human voice. And he, the final check was, hey, is this really me? Is this really what I would say? Is, is there a story in here that I can layer in between the text that I just got back that can make it our own? And uh, you know, if you want that article, I can send it to you and you can be the judge. But to me, it seemed pretty legit. And at the end of the day, it puts out the rep out there to be able to experiment and put content out there. Yeah. Again, it's a tool. Do you be the judge of, you know, how you're going to be using it? But again, the reminder from the very beginning of the episode was that all those black hat tactics and tricks, right? They ultimately end up being just like cut off from the legs and those people pay the price. Yeah. Right. So whether you are in just social media or SEO or whatever, you are creating content, keep that in mind, right? And infuse your experience and your stories and your voice because yes, people are actually looking for, you know, authenticity and empathy and real. And especially now with the rise of AI and you know, robots and I don't know who else, what I don't know what's next. <laughs> what maybe an alien invasion, who knows, right? <laughs> but whatever is next, 
people want more connection with humans. And the more you add this to your content, it is definitely going to help you move forward and connect with the right people. Jose, do you know which is uh, the number one feedback we get, positive feedback we get from the show? We like your stories. We like your jokes. No. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. You told me guess. We love your energy. Ah, let's go energy. Yeah. And can AI replicate energy? Definitely not. Not at least in this medium that I we that we are publishing right now, right? Podcasting, video podcasting. Yep. For us, this is our main media. And believe me, we've looked for like a tool that can potentially replicate our yeah. faces and our energy and our thing. And it's not happening. I think we will moment. be good YouTube gaming streamers. Just saying. Just saying. I think it would be YouTube pretty good. Yeah. Can you move the mouse? Somebody <laughs> left a comment in there. Oh, it boy. can enhance you, not replicate you. That is true, one hundred percent. Right? It can enhance you. Yeah. Um, awesome. I think that's everything from on my end. Do you have anything else you want to add? No. Again, look back at this episode. It's like how you know with this new element, like your experience. How are you gonna embed it in the type of content that you're creating? And if you're using AI today to leverage and enhance that. How are you going to layer them inside of them? Are there prompts? Are there your own stories? Are you going to be adding them? Are you going to, you know, put a team member on it? Are you yourself doing it? I highly encourage for this week, look at that, at what you're creating and embed that story. This is the other option that nobody talks about. You can go to Neuralink by Elon Musk and then you can get a chip <laughs> in your brain and then you become the AI. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Definitely don't do That's that. Good. It's going to be crazy. Uh, no, super side note. I, I was watching earlier <laughs> during the lunch. Uh, Tangent alert. Uh, I, a, a very cool video on Yes Theory is a channel that we follow for many, many years, right? And they gave uh, a ticket to an stranger and they end up going to, to a very exotic country, right? And the whole video, and I'm not going to say because I don't want to ruin it for people, but... Okay, I was the, like, what's the country? <laughs> <laughs> now you got to watch it. Uh, but the whole video was obviously leveraging the topic of AI that's very present out there in the world right now. It's a big wave, right? We talked about this in the marketing principles, right? And they asked the AI to give them 10 things to do in this very exotic country. And then the video is about these 10 things that they do yeah. in the exotic country. So again, that's a very specific example on that uh, type of content, which is entertainment, yeah. right? On how you can leverage it, right? Be creative. I think this is so fun. Yeah. It just unlocks a bunch of possibilities. That, that's a that's a really, really good point. And it's more kind of like a adjacent content tip to, to today's episode. But, you know, sometimes you have your niche and you're like, I want to talk in here. Well, guess what? Sometimes you just reach the threshold in like market penetration of your your message, right? And you're looking to tap into new audiences and leveraging topics that are just on fire at the moment is perfect to do so. Why do you think we do quite a few episodes about AI, right? But also we relate them to our main core topic of content. Well, you know what would be cool? It would be like uh, asking AI to write or call emails and see who wins. AI or you? Like open rates? Like open rates. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be interesting. And see what happens. And then create content around that stuff idea. So again, like I think there's or, so many creative ideas adapted to your business. You don't have to talk just about that. It's like use the thing, document you doing the thing. Document. Say, document. <laughs> document. <laughs> and anyways, I think we like AI, like what's some content that we can create by leveraging AI, but not talking about AI? I know. Ooh. Interesting. All right, cool. Hit it. Let's go. See you guys. Thank you so much for listening <laughs> to the Contest Profit Podcast. Go to follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at Liz Rose Co. That is right. If today's episode helped you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. Thank you. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye.